Well, good morning once again, everybody. Today we start a brand new series entitled Breaking Through. Let's pray before we study together. Father, I pray that you prepare each and every one of our hearts, that you prepare every one of our ears to hear and our minds to be receptive to your truth. I pray, Lord, that by the ministry and presence of your Spirit, that you would speak to us, that you would speak out of your Spirit into our spirits, and that we'd hear and fully follow, that we'd receive from you today hope and encouragement the kind that only you can give. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, long before Felix Baumgartner on October the 14th, 2012, broke through the sound barrier with his own body, and even long before Chuck Yeager on October the 14th, 1947, broke through the sound barrier for the very first time, long before all of that, there was actually a man named Breakthrough. Open your Bibles today to Genesis chapter 38. Genesis chapter 38, if you need a Bible to study along with us, please raise your hand up high and an usher will bring you a Bible. Genesis chapter 38. Now in Genesis chapter 38, we are going to find one of the messiest, most dysfunctional family stories in the Bible. Some of you are feeling better already because you feel like we are not alone In Genesis chapter 38, Judah, one of the sons of Jacob, just after selling his own brother into slavery, he leaves his other brothers, and he goes off to find a wife. And he finds a wife, a Canaanite girl named Shua, and they then have three sons. The first two sons they have kind of close together. The third son is years later. But the first two sons are named Ur and Onan. And so Judah goes to find a wife for his eldest son, Ur. And he finds a girl named Tamar. And they become husband and wife. The problem is, the Bible says that Ur, the oldest son of Judah, that he is wicked in the sight of the Lord. So, to put it plainly, the Bible says the Lord kills him. How many of you are glad you live under the new covenant? Right? grace and mercy. How many of you are glad that God took his judgment and his wrath and he placed it all on Jesus at Calvary's cross? So anyway, uh, Ur gets taken out by the Lord. And so Judah comes and says to the next son, Onan, because this was also the law, okay, now you have to take Tamar as your wife and have children, um, you know, instead of your brother and raise them for him. And Onan doesn't really sign on fully. He becomes uh, Tamar's husband, but when they go to consummate the marriage, he doesn't fully consummate the marriage. And that's as far as I'm willing to go with that description of what happens there, okay? You'll have to just read that on your own. But it displeases the Lord as well, and the Lord takes him out as well. How many of you are glad you live under the new covenant, right? Grace and mercy. So now there's one son left, and he's quite a bit younger. And so Judah goes to Tamar and says, Listen, continue to keep your widow's garments on and live at your father's house. And when Shelah, the the youngest son, when he grows old enough, I'll give him to you for a husband. Now, to be quite honest with you, it doesn't look like Judah ever really intended for this to happen. Uh, maybe he's thinking, you know, I gave her the first two sons and look what happened. You know, so he doesn't really seem to do it, but he says that to her. Uh, as time passes, Judah's wife, Shua, passes away. And he mourns and then he's comforted and tells one of his buddies, you know what, I'm going to go up to a city called Timnah where I have sheep. And I'm going to shear the sheep there. Well, word gets out to Tamar that Judah, her father-in-law, is going to this place called Timnah. And by now, Sheila has grown up, and she sees, you know what? He's not going to keep his promise. He's not going to give Sheila to me as a husband, and so I'm going to do another thing. And so she takes off her widow's garments, and she puts on the garments of a harlot, and she veils her face, and she heads off to Timnah first. She sits openly on the roadside, and as Judah comes by, he sees this harlot sitting on the roadside, and he approaches her. And 
asks her, you know, for her services. And so then she says, well, what will you give me? And he says, I'll send you a young goat from my flock. And she says, well, in the meantime, what will you give me as a pledge that you will do that? And so then he says, well, what do you want? And she says, well, I want your signet ring, which in those days would have been hung on his neck by a cord. She says, I want the signet, I want the cord, and I want your staff. And he says, sure. And so they come together. And Tamar conceives. Judah doesn't know this, of course. He goes back and he gets his buddy, Hiram the Adulamite, and he says, listen, I need you to go and take this young goat to a harlot in Timnah and get back my signet, my cord, and my staff. And so Hiram goes there and he goes looking for this harlot and he can't find a harlot anywhere. And he starts to talk to the people of the city and says, you know, there's a woman. She sits openly by the side of the road. Where is she? And they said, no, we don't have any of that going on in our city. And so he comes back and he says to Judah, couldn't find her anywhere. Well, three months later, Judah gets word that your daughter-in-law, Tamar, she's played the harlot. And not only has she played the harlot, but she's pregnant through harlotry. And so, of course, Judah says, well, what does the law say? And the law would say in that case to have her publicly executed. How many of you are glad you live under the new covenant? Amen? Right? And so... He says, well, have her brought out and burned. And as they bring her out to execute her, she says, just wait one second. Here, bring these to Judah. Bring this signet and this cord and this staff. Bring them to him and tell him that whoever these belong to, that's the father of the child I've conceived. And so when Judah gets these things, and puts all the pieces of the puzzle together, which probably doesn't take very long. He says, oh, she is more righteous than I. How many of you know that that bar is pretty low though, right? At this point. She is more righteous than I. And from that day forward, she is obviously not executed. And the Bible says Judah uh, knows her no more. We pick up the story. We're going to go right into the birthing room, as a matter of fact. In Genesis chapter 38, beginning at verse 27. It says, Now it came to pass at the time for giving birth that, behold, twins were in her womb. And so it was when she was giving birth that the one put out his hand and the midwife took a scarlet thread and bound it on his hand, saying, This one came out first. Then it happened, as he drew back his hand, that his brother came out unexpectedly. And she, the midwife, now says to this newborn, How did you break through? This breach be upon you. Therefore, his name was called Perez. Afterward, his brother came out, who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Zerah. Real quickly, I want you to notice the name Perez. Perez is the name of the child who breaks through. And the reason being is in Hebrew, his name would be Perez, which simply and succinctly means breakthrough. His name would be breakthrough. You see, it's it's one thing to pray for breakthrough. It is one thing to believe for breakthrough. It is one thing to wait on the Lord for breakthrough. It is an entirely other thing to be named breakthrough. This young man, for the rest of his life, will be called breakthrough. When he introduces himself to people, he will introduce himself as breakthrough. People will come up to him and say, Shalom, my name is Shaul. What is your name? And he'll go, Shalom, breakthrough. Hi, I'm Bob, breakthrough. Now, we don't know very much about the life of breakthrough. But what we do know about him is epic. It is off the charts in comparison to where he came from. Here's what we know about Perez, breakthrough. We know that he had two sons. Hezron and Hamul. We know that they each had families. We know that the clans that came from breakthrough gained a reputation in Israel that was legendary. 
they were known to be blessed by the Lord. As a matter of fact, 500 years later, when Boaz, the kinsman redeemer, would redeem Ruth the Moabitess, when that all happened, the elders at the city gate, they proclaimed a blessing over Boaz. Watch what they said in Ruth chapter 4, beginning in verse 11. And all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. The Lord make the woman who is coming to your house like Rachel and Leah, the two who built the house of Israel. And may you prosper in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. May your house be like the house of breakthrough. Perez, who Tamar bore to Judah because of the offspring with which the Lord will give you from this young woman. Fast forward now to the book of Nehemiah. The children of Israel were captive. They came back. They've rebuilt the temple. They have miraculously rebuilt the walls around the city of Jerusalem in just 52 days. And when the families who all participated in the rebuilding of the walls, when they are being named and they are being honored and they are being accredited for the work that they did, watch this. Nehemiah chapter 11, from the tribe of Judah. Athiah, son of Uzziah, son of Zechariah, son of Amariah, son of this other guy, son of Mahalalel, of the family of Perez. Also, Masiah, son of Baruch, son of Kolhoza, son of Haziah, son of Adiah, son of Joyarib, son of Zechariah, of the family of Shelah. They, watch this, there were 468 descendants of Breakthrough of Perez, who lived in Jerusalem, watch this, all outstanding men. Not most of them were outstanding men. Not, not 85, 90%, which would be amazing. All of them, 468 out of 468, were, who were all descendants of Perez, all descendants of breakthrough, all of them were outstanding. Other translations there say that they were valiant. Other translations say that they were able. That word for outstanding, they were all outstanding men, is the Hebrew word chayil. And it means of means, substance, and resources. Of valor, strength, power. Virtuous, worthy, a force to be reckoned with. That's how the family of breakthrough was spoken of for hundreds and hundreds of years. Fast forward one more time into the New Testament, into the Gospels, because breakthrough appears there in Matthew chapter 1, starting at verse 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Now the brothers aren't mentioned, now we only pick up with Judah. Judah begot breakthrough. And Zerah by Tamar. We don't hear about Zerah anymore. And Perez begot Hezron. And Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminadab. Aminadab begot Nashon. And Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Ruth. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David the king. Breakthrough is the grandpa. Seven times removed from King David. Which means he is the uh, great-grandpappy by the 35th power through Joseph of Jesus Christ. I said all of that to say this. Your beginning does not determine your end. I said your beginning does not determine your end. You can break through By breaking away from your past. And in Christ Jesus, you are breakthrough. I'll show you in just a little while. But in the meantime, here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn to the person next to you, introduce yourself, say, hello, my name is Breakthrough. Go ahead, tell them right now. Go ahead. Come on, do it. Some of you all are so funny when I ask you to do those things. You know, I see some people go like this. And they get get real serious in the Bible reading. Turn to the person on your other side that you just so rudely ignored and tell them, say, hello, my name is Breakthrough. Go ahead, tell them, the other person, go ahead. Understand this. Perez's beginning is as dysfunctional as it gets, right? He's conceived in wicked deceit. He is the definition of illegitimate, but he breaks through. 
He starts off in last place. No scarlet red around his little wrist, no silver spoon in his mouth, but he breaks through. His beginning did not determine his end. Ready? And your beginning does not determine your end. I mean, you think about it, Perez's dad is a mess. He was a mess. Judah conspired to throw his little brother Joseph into a pit. And then he's the one who came up with the plan to sell Joseph into slavery. He's a mess. I mean, you think about it. Judah's first two sons are so wicked that God wipes them off the face of the earth. And Judah solicits a harlot without thinking twice. But breakthrough broke through all of that. His mom's not a whole lot better. You know, she's conniving, she's deceptive, she plays the harlot for her father-in-law. Really? Yuck! (laughs) Now, I know that Judah calls Tamar righteous, but, but consider the source. I don't know if I sign on to that. But breakthrough breaks through by breaking away. He breaks away from the bad habits of his family. Let that sink in a little bit. He breaks away from the bad habits of his family. Does your family have any habits that you are not proud of? Any, anything in your family history that makes you feel ashamed? You know, when you think of it, you shudder. Please hear me. Your family dysfunction is not your destiny. I said, your family dysfunction is not your destiny. You can break through by breaking free through the power of God. I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me all the way back to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Now, I would venture to say that the vast majority of us have some pretty significant issues in our family history. If not all of us, but let's just be conservative about it. Ready? I'd say the vast majority of us, our family history, there's issues back. We could tell some stories today. We could probably play a pretty mean game of can you top this? Most of us. Somewhere in our ancestry, we have ugliness. Somewhere in our ancestry, there's alcoholism or gambling addictions or drugs or abuse or incest or greed, lying, cheating, stealing, radical irresponsibility, uncaring selfishness, cold callousness, and aversion to the things of God. Let me lean forward today and say something extremely important to you. And if you don't get anything else today, please get this. That's not you. I said, that's not you. I think you need to say that aloud. I think you need to say for yourself, just say, that's not me. Go ahead and say it. Some of you need to convince yourself a little bit better. Say, that is not me. That's not me. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, every generational curse, issue, dysfunction was broken off of you. I'm going to show you. You say, well, well, you know, my dad died of a heart attack at 48. My grandfather died of heart disease at 45. So stop. That's not you. Well, my parents were poor. My grandparents were poor. My brothers and sisters. Stop. That is not you. Well, mental illness runs in my family. Alzheimer's disease runs in my my family. Never gets a break. Stop. That's not you. You are not who your lineage says you are. You are who God says you are. And ready? You are breakthrough. From this point forward, I declare and decree according to the power vested in me, that your middle name is now Perez. Blake 
Perez Buchanan. Frank Perez Cox. Watch this. Titus chapter 3, starting in verse 4. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared. How many of you are glad you live under the new covenant, right? Kindness and love. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Stop right there for just a moment. Marked in my Bible, whenever I see that word saved, it's important. It's not just a religious word. This is a powerful New Testament word. By his mercy he saved us. That word in Greek is the word sozo. And it means to deliver, protect, preserve, save, heal, make whole. It is inclusive for all of the blessings of God bestowed on mankind in Christ. By his mercy, he did all that to us. By his mercy, he sozoed us through the washing of regeneration. If you have your own Bible in front of you and you've got something to mark it up with and you're comfortable marking it up, mark that word regeneration. Circle it, underline it, highlight it. He saved us through the washing of regeneration generation and renewing of the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior there that having been justified by his grace by unmerited favor justified just as if I'd never sinned by his grace we should become heirs according to the hope the confident expectation of eternal life now there is so much in those few verses I'd love to stay there for weeks but just for the sake of of our study this morning, I want you to take a good look at that word, regeneration. Regeneration. It is, in Greek, palingenesia. Palingenesia. The word palin meaning again or anew. Genesia would be the way, in Greek, to say the word genesis. That's where we get genesis, birth or beginning. Uh, to be birthed again, a new beginning. It means the inception of a new state of things in contrast with the old. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Look at that word regeneration. And many years ago, I heard my pastor preach about this word, and he said, I want you to look at that word, and I want you to know that you have been regenerated. He said, you've got different genes. And I, I laughed. You know, I thought that's, you know, that's kind of cute. That's a, a good play on words. That's, that's real funny. Until I studied it this week. And there is validity to it. The word genes, or the word genetic, or genetic code, that comes from the Bible word Genesis. That's where it actually comes from. The moment that you and I, by faith, believe and accept and receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Listen to me carefully. Something deeper than a DNA strand happens. Something that transcends chromosomes and genetic codes takes place place. Why? Because not only are we re but our sins are forever washed away. We are severed from the curse of the old person. Our spirit comes alive. We are indwelt by the very spirit of Almighty God. Our spirit and God's spirit unite. We are translated out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are accepted in the beloved. Our lives are indwelt by Christ himself. Our bodies are indwelt by the spirit of God to the point where the Bible says that the same power that raised Christ Christ from the dead lives in our mortal bodies. We, bodies. we become the temple of the living God. For me, I think the best place to sum it up is found in Colossians. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, it says this, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Ready? Which is... Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, 
In me? Yeah, in you. In me? Yeah, even you. Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. And, and because of his great love and because of his great mercy and because of his compassion and his kindness and because of his amazing grace, because you have been sozoed and because you have been regenerated and because Christ is in you and you are in him, you have a new identity. You are not who you were. Can I say it to you this way? Ready? Look here. You are not normal. Now, I know you've been told that before in different contexts. <laughs> but you're, you're not normal. You're not ordinary. God's added his super to your natural. God's added his extra to your ordinary. You're different. Man, there's a glitch in Ancestry.com. Why? Because there ought to be an asterisk next to your name. You have a new identity. You know, let me just pause for a moment because I kind of felt the same thing in the first service. And we're going to cover this in weeks to come, but I'm going to let the cat out of the bag just a little bit before. Here's how breakthrough happens. Ready? By believing. It, it, it really boils down to life change happens. Habits are changed. All that happens. Breaking through happens by believing. And I was just thinking this morning as I was speaking, even early this morning as I was praying, if we just believe this. No, I, I mean really believe it. I, I don't mean like check the box. Yes, I believe. I'm a Christian. You know, I'm not talking about that. Yes, I went to Christian school. Yes, my granddaddy was a preacher. Yeah, that's great. We, we are very happy for you. But what we're talking about here is different than that talking about really signing on, really believing this. Because if we really believe this, our lives would be different. If we really believe this, we'd understand we have a different identity. We have a new identity. You know what this says? This says that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are. You are an ambassador of, for Christ. You are a minister of reconciliation. You are a new creation. You are a priest. You are a king. You are light. You are salt. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own special people. And because of all that, I submit to you today that you are breakthrough. You. Your breakthrough. In other words, when you walk into the room, joy should break out. Some of you are saying, never seen that happen before. No, no, no. You are breakthrough. And so that means when you arrive, the answer to the problem just came. Oh yeah, you're there. And that means that you're, when you sit down at the desk, Everybody should get ready, because wisdom is about to flow. Sure, you're there. Man, your past is gone. Your future is blindingly bright. Your former, former station in life has been obliterated by the very goodness of God. And check this out. God, His grace... His abundant grace will not only manifest itself in you and for you, but it will also break through and break forth and break out in your children and in your children's ch children and for generations to come until the Lord comes. Watch this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. Let's read it aloud together today. Ready? Let's read. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Notice all, not some, not most, all the promises of God in him are yes and amen, or so be it, to the glory of God through who? Through us. Are you ready? God's yes is upon you. God's yes is upon you. Tell the person next to you, say, God's yes is upon you. Come on, tell them. God's yes is upon you. 
Not because of what you do, but because of what Jesus has done. Not because you're good, but because God is good. Not because of your good works, but because of the kindness and love and mercy and unmerited favor of God. God's yes is upon you. Wisdom, yes. Favor, yes. Forgiveness, yes. Provision, yes. Healing, yes. Blessing, yes. Peace, yes. Joy, yes. Victory, yes. Breakthrough, yes. Because you are regenerated. Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. Because God's yes is upon you. You are breakthrough. Let's pray. Father, I pray. I pray for each and every one of us that gets bogged down in the past. I pray for every single one of us that are imprisoned through limitations that were spoken over us when we were kids and when we were teens. All the things we were told that we can't do and we never become. All the negative things that we told we, we were told that we are. I pray, Lord, that there would be even a release from a lot of the religious ideas that we grew up with that are very limiting and not scriptural. And I pray, Lord, that we're able to break free from those mentalities. I pray, Lord, that we would be able to break free to the point where we believe. We really believe your word, that we believe that we can have what you said we could have, that we could do what you said we could do, that we could become the people that you have destined and desired us to become. I pray, Lord, that it starts today, that we, that we take the lid off, that we break through that, that glass seal. pray, Lord, that faith rises up within each and every one of us to see ourselves differently, to see other people differently, and to see you differently. The God who loves us. For every person that has been held back, for every person that struggles so hard to believe good about themselves, I pray, Lord, that there'll be a breakthrough. Before we pray any further with every head bowed and every eye closed please nobody looking around maybe you're here today and you have never before personally accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior you've never personally prayed a prayer from your heart through your lips in which you've said Jesus I believe in you forgive all of my sins Make me brand new. Give me a fresh start. Maybe you've never done that today. And today is, in fact, your day. Maybe today is the day that you pray that prayer. Maybe today is the day that you receive Jesus. Or maybe you would say to me, hey, John, you know, I have. I prayed a prayer like that once before. I prayed a prayer like that when I was a kid. Or maybe when I was a teenager. Or, But then... I turned around and I walked away. I walked away from the Lord. I turned my back on Him. And if I were to tell the truth right now, yeah, I'm in church. But when I'm not, I live any old way I want to. I don't live like someone who's got a relationship with God. But I want to come back home. I want to recommit my life to Christ. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you would either like to give your heart to Him and surrender all for the very first time, or maybe for you it's the first time in a long time, well then I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you right now. If you would say, John, that's me. 
I want to know that I know that I know that when I leave this place today, my heart is right with God. Then here's what I'd ask you to do just before I pray for you and pray with you. While no one else is looking and every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if that's you, would you let me know that I'm praying with you? Would you let me know that, that who I'm praying with? By doing the following, if it's you, just quickly, right at your seat, just lift your hand up, wave it at me, and put it right back down if that's you. Do it right now. Yes, I see your hand and 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 your hand. That's outstanding. Anybody else do it real quickly? If you haven't already raised your hand, Raise it up high, wave it at me, and put it right back down. That's outstanding. Everybody, right where you are, right at your seats, I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. I want you to repeat it after me, but please make these words your own by praying them with all of your heart. Say this with me today. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus and with my heart I believe I believe in you Jesus I believe you are the Son of God I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead today I give you my heart I give you my life I'm coming home to you Lord thank you for accepting me just as I am thank you for forgiving me and giving me new life Thank you for healing me and making me whole. I will live for you and fully follow just as I pray this prayer by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen carefully. If you just raised your hand and prayed that prayer, and there's a whole bunch of you that did, or if you didn't raise your hand but you still prayed that from your heart, as soon as the service is over, which is going to be in about three or four minutes, as soon as the service is over, please meet me, and there'll be a couple other folks with me over where it says next steps on the wall by those high top tables. We'll be over there. We want to give some things to you, some tools to help you get started or restarted in your relationship with God, and we'd love to just meet you and spend some time with you over there. Uh, before we go, a couple of quick but important announcements. The first one is the Hey, I'm Here cards. If you have not already filled out a Hey, I'm Here card, they're in the seat backs all over the sanctuary. If you have a prayer request, please take a moment, write that down. We'll put it on an email list and send it out to a bunch of people to pray with you and for you this week. If it is your first, second, or third time with us, please take a moment Fill out the card completely. You can place those cards in the little brown boxes on the walls as we exit. But if it's your first time, take that card with you to the information desk. We've got a gift for you there. We just want to say thank you for worshiping with us today. A couple of other announcements. The first one is right after this service. So in a couple of minutes, we need a bunch of people to kind of help us take chairs and stack them on this wall over here. I think Neil will be out here and a couple other people will be here to kind of tell us where that has to go because we're going to put tables out and then we're going to have a meal together. So we invite everybody to stay for some soup and cornbread. That's what we're going to do this afternoon. Just a time really to fellowship and hang out together. Rylan, you're excited about that? That was a great yay. I appreciate that. That's good. No one else responded. Nobody else is excited. So... Go get them. Okay, so we're going to do that right after this service. The only other announcement I have for you, we mentioned it last week for the first time, um, but you really need to mark your calendars for Saturday, uh, the end of this month, Saturday, January the 26th. We are hosting a seminar by Walk Through the Bible that is going to be outstanding. It's a long deal. It's The seminar itself is six hours plus breaks. So we'll be here from about 9 in the morning till 4.30, but it is an investment of time into yourself, your spiritual walk with God, and into your children that I promise you want to make. Watch this video tell you all about it. So this is the Bible. Well, these days it might even turn on like this. The Bible is large, it is old, it was around when people looked like this. How does it apply to me? I mean, it's longer than 140 characters. Where do I begin? It can be intimidating. Why do I need to learn the Old Testament? Why not just skip over to the New Testament? Well, consider this. Did you know that Jesus quotes the Old Testament? 
God's story of salvation and love begins in the Old Testament? Or did Jesus lived during Old Testament times? Maybe you like Genesis, and Exodus is pretty epic, but what is the deal with Leviticus? And what's a Habakkuk? Walk through the Old Testament can answer all these questions in a few hours. And yeah, that's right, you can learn the entire Old Testament in a few hours. You can learn it in the time it takes to fly from New York to LA, or in the time it takes to build that bookshelf from that funny sounding furniture store. Walk through the Old Testament is the creative idea of walk through the Bible. Over 10 million people have discovered walk through the Bible live events. God's big plan in the Old Testament is really a rescue plan, an amazingly true story of how God wanted a relationship with his people. It's filled with drama, excitement, and family tension. Plus, there's a dude named Jethro. It's not just knowledge, it's a foundation upon which everything else in your life should be built on. Knowing the Old Testament helps you understand God, his plans, his justice, his love, and how you fit into all of it. God has a plan for your life. Understanding the Old Testament is understanding God better. So, what if you could learn the entire Old Testament in just a few hours? What if you could know it so well you could tell a friend in three minutes? Well, you can. Tend to walk through the Old Testament, learn the Old Testament in just a few hours. Remember it and apply it to the rest of your life. Okay, so it's an investment in your time. Six hour seminar plus breaks. It is an investment in your finances as well. Here's the cost breakdown. For adults, it's going to be $25 each. For children, it's $15 each. We're going to do elementary school age kids in their own seminar in another room doing the exact thing. If you have a family of two children, we'll give you a $10 break. If you have three or more, $15 break. So that means one of the children goes for free. Now listen carefully. We have five children in our family. We know what it costs to raise children. Can I just give you an example? When one of our boys wants a new video game, when they want NBA 2K13, or they want Madden 13, and it has just been released, you know what that costs? Anybody know what that costs? $69.95, yes, if, if you get like the deluxe edition. For one video game. I was thinking of some descriptive words, but anyway, one video game that will come and go and add nothing to their lives. If my wife and I go out for dinner and a movie, how many of you know it's going to cost infinitely more than what it's going to cost for, for a walk through the Bible? And we'll enjoy the movie, and we'll have dinner, and it'll come and go. Listen to me carefully. This event is designed for you to learn the entire Old Testament in such a way that you and your children will never forget it for the rest of your life. This is a significant eternal investment in your life and in the life of your children. Now, one other thing that I do want to mention is this. I'm going to tell you today to go out there, sign up, pay for it. We're going to, we're going to get this outside of the church too, so let your friends know that we're doing this. This is going to be a great thing for our church, for our families, and for our community. Um, but I also want you to prayerfully consider maybe sponsoring somebody else too. Maybe there are people, I'm sure, I know that there are people within our congregation and people in our community that this would radically benefit their lives, but they cannot afford it. And there are some of us that can afford to pay for our own and somebody else too. And so I want you to consider doing that. This is going to be a great event. They have a method designed to make you remember the whole Old Testament that they've been doing for about a half a century, and it works really well. So it's going to be very impactful for us. So I want to encourage you today, there are sign-ups out there, Neil's out there, a few other people, where you can sign up and get your spot and your family's spot today. Stand with me, if you will. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you who made a decision for Jesus, I will see you over at Next Steps. A few others of you, start stacking. We can start with this side. Stack chairs against the wall, if you will. And we'll tell you how far to go here. And then we'll eat together.